morning po sa inyo lahat. Happy Father's Day from me to you. <laughs> uh, may kurut man po sa akin po so because my dad's no longer here. Pero to the rest of you, still have your dads here. Celebrate! Celebrate kayo. Yung mga pamilya dyan, yung mga anak dyan. Maski yung parang mas kayo ang nagsiselebrate kesa doon sa taong sineselebrate. Just enjoy the day. Anyway po, marami salamat po muli sa Panginoon for this uh, new opportunity to share His Word. Sa so, umaga pong ito, ang titulo po ng ating mensahe ay Jesus is the only standard of good. Okay. Um, kakagaling ko lang po sa ubo. If I suddenly break out into a coughing fit, hindi pa po ako namamatay na na. <laughs> Just give me time. Anyway, ang ati pong uh, mensahe ngayon ay magpo-focus po sa kabutihan po ng ating Panginoon. Pero gusto ko rin po mag, ano, mag, uh, magtuon ng pansin. Tuon sa mga pag-iisip na medyo sa liwa sa pagdedeklara natin na Jesus is the only standard of good. Ito po sa panahon natin, it's not uncommon po to hear people say, Oh, I'm a good person. I'm good. Bakit? Uh, I don't have any vices. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I don't do drugs. I'm a decent person. I help people. I do good by staying in my lane. If we think about it, that's probably what the wealthy young man in Mark 10, 17 to 20 had in mind when he approached Jesus, asking how he might enter the kingdom of heaven. Basahin ko po, pero hindi pa po, uh, hindi pa po iyan yung ating main text for the day. Sabi po sa 17, as Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered, no one is good except God alone. You know the commandments, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony, you shall not defraud, Honor your father and mother. Teacher, he declared, all these I have kept since I was a boy. By human standards, ito pong rich young man, he already had it all figured out, and he had already lived an exemplary life despite his relatively young age. Our Lord Jesus acknowledged that, sabi po sa verse 21. Jesus looked at him and loved him. But Jesus, God the Son, also pointed out where the young man fell short. So verses 21 to 25, ang sabi po. Sabi, ayan, nakuha po siya. One thing you lack, he said, go sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, then come, follow me. At this, the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his word, but Jesus said again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. The young man knew that there was something he couldn't give up for the love of God and his desire for heaven. But uh, dito po sa Biblia, siguro that was the last time that we heard about this uh, young man, ano? Ang tanong po, was he truly not worthy of the kingdom of God? When Jesus so mercifully assured the criminal on his side in Calvary that he would be with him in paradise, tigil po muna tayo doon, ha? At basahin po natin yung ang ating main text sa umagang ito. Mahilig ko nga po kayo na buksan ang inyong mga Biblia and let's read 1 Peter 2. 1 Peter 2. Yung mga may Biblia po, yung mga may apps po ng inyong Biblia, buksan na po ninyo. 1 Peter 2. We are going to read the entire chapter. Salitan po tayo, ha? Ng pagpabasa. Uh, gugrupo po ako dito. We will read verse 1, kayo verse 2, then so on. Makita yun na nga po kung nakita nyo na po. Kung nakita nyo na po ang 1 Peter 2, simula na po natin. Sabi, ano, magpasa po ha? Aloud. Kasabay ko po kayo. Tapos kayo, verse 2. Let's read. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Yeah. 
You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious. But to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. But you are a chosen generation. May kasabay po ba ako? But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. His own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Therefore, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether to the king as supreme, for this is the will of God that by doing good you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. For this is commendable, if because of conscience toward God one endures grief, suffering wrongfully. For to this you were called because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. Who, when he was reviled, did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously. Sabay-sabay po tayo sa 25. For you were like sheep going astray, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Makakaupo na po kayong lahat. Ito pong text na binasa natin, it elucidates po how Jesus is the standard. A man who committed no sin, no deceit, who suffered and was reviled, he also presented the rules for us to follow. He was not ignorant of the struggles of his followers. No doubt we should be holding anybody to a high standard other than our Lord Jesus Christ when it comes to goodness and righteousness. Pero po tayo mga tao, na mga human beings, with human nature, at maski po tayo na mga Kristiyano na, maski matagal na, paminsan-minsan po, meron po tayo mga ibang naitataas na mabuti. At meron din tayong standard of living na hindi angkop sa turo ng Panginoon maski sinasabi natin na ito ay mabuti. Kaya po sa umagang ito, magpo-focus po tayo dito sa mag- kung paano natin nagagawa itong mga bagay na ito na hindi katanggap-tanggap sa Panginoon. At yung nararapat na pagtataas po natin sa ating Panginoong Jesus bilang tunay na pamantayan po ng kabutihan. Simulan po natin doon sa unang inclination. Ano? Lifting oneself as the standard. Let's all admit that at one point or another in our Christian lives, nasabi po natin, at least hindi ko nagagawa yan. Hindi ko ginagawa yan. We establish our own situations uh, as better than those who actually sin. Kumbaga, my sins are not as grave as yours, are not as grave as yours. We make ourselves the arbiters of what's good and what's right. In such a fashion, tayo po parati ang bida, tayo parati ang sikat, tayo ang parating mabuti. Iyon po sa ating paningin yun, ano? Pero ano po ba ang standard ng ating Panginoong Jesus? Put others above yourself. 
There are several verses that support this. Siguro po ang pinakasikat yung Philippians 2, 3, and 4. Mabasa po natin. Do not think from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves, that each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. And there are two verses in Romans 12 na maaari po natin idugtong dito. Sa 3 po, sabi dito, For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. And in 16, it says here, Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Unquestionably, we should boast about ourselves. Una-una po, medyo cringy. No, tipo parati tayong nagtataas sa ating mga sarili, ano? Pero lalo pong hindi tayo dapat magtaas sa ating mga sarili when we uh, talk about the quality of our walk in faith and goodness. Tandaan po natin, we have all sinned. It is written in the Bible. We have all sinned. And it's thanks to the grace of God through His Son, Jesus Christ, that we have the right to stand before His throne. So what can we do instead? Uh, siguro po ang pinakamainam is to remind others and ourselves that we are still on our walk and as brothers and sisters in Christ uh, we must uplift each other iwasan po natin magkumpara lalo na sa mga sarili natin una -una, nakakaya po yun sa totoo lang after all we don't know each other's lives we don't know each other's lives completely ang Panginoon lamang po ang nakakaalam nun the next one is a little extreme Pero medyo, eh, ano po ito? It came on display during the height of the pandemic. Using, oh, there's no the supposed, using Jesus as an excuse to be above authority or logic. Yun nga po nasabi ko sa inyo, di ba? This came on display during the pandemic. Uh, naalala ko po, kaming pamilya nun, uh, nanonood kami ng TV Patrol online. And uh, there was this group of young Christians na maglalakbay po sila sa dagat. At um, hindi na po sila pinapayagan noon. Actually, first wave po yata ito. Nung first wave ng COVID. Hindi po sila pinapayagan. Ayaw, pero ayaw nila sumunod sa utos ng gobyerno to stay put. Um, ito po yung patungkol sa pag-iingat mula sa COVID. Napakatapang po. At babae yun eh. Babae yung nagsalita nun eh. Naaalala ko. Sa... May kasabay akong bata. <laughs> um, eh, yun nga po, may babae na nagsalita. Napakatapang po na sinabi niya, paprotektahan kami ni Jesus laban sa COVID. Uh, ito po yung panahon na, ano, na overwhelmed po yung ating mga ospital. Nagkakaubusan ng ospital na mag-a-admit ng mga tao na may COVID-19. And in the US, it was almost the same thing. People were claiming that Jesus was their God or their boss, kaya they're above the law. Um, I don't know what became of those people, sadly. Pero ang mas nakakalungkot, nakakalungkot po doon, yung Christian faith was mocked because of their behavior. Ang issue po dito ay hindi yung pagsunod sa panukala ng gobyerno na inilatag upang tayo po ay protektahan. At higit sa lahat yung paggamit sa kapangyarihan ng ating Diyos, ating Panginoong Jesus, sa maling konteksto. Iyon po yung keyword yan, maling konteksto. May kalapastanganan po na nangyari sa pangalan ni Jesus dito sa sitwasyon na ganito. Pero ano po ba ang standard ng Panginoon? Submit to authority. Tayo mga Kristiyano, we, we don't doubt that God is above all, Jesus is above all. They are the ultimate authority and power. After all, God created the heavens and the earth. And Jesus, during His time here on earth, He accomplished a incredible miracles. However, in the situations that I mentioned earlier, applicable po yung verses 13 to 17 ng 1 Peter 2. Balikan po natin ha. Sabi po dyan, Therefore, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake whether to the king as supreme or to governors as to those who were sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do good. For this is the will of God that by doing good, you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men 
as free, yet not using liberty as a cloak for vice, but as bond servants of God. Honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. I will never argue that our government is flawed in, uh, more, situ uh, in more ways than we can count. Sa pagbabayad ng alam po, di ba, ng buwis, eh, issue na yan sa ating presidente. Meron po tayo mga miyembro ng ating gabinete na may anak, na hulihan ng mga droga. Pero parang hindi po na-apply ang law doon, ano? Ang ating po gobyerno, it is flawed. However, tayo po mga kresyano, let us never use our faith as an excuse for insolence. Alam niyo po ba yung insolence sa Tagalog? Hinanap ko po ito eh. Walang pakundangan. If you are walang pakundangan, you are insolent. Yes, Jesus is above all. But remember Jesus response in Mark 12, 17. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. Tayo po, we are, hev we are heaven bound. We know our king. He's the king, and king of kings, lord of lords. But we are still on earth. Sa kalakaran po ng societal order, we're supposed to follow rules set by man. We can do that without compromising our Christian faith and our testimony. And in so doing, Jesus will be glorified. Of course, it's a different matter kung parang nung panahon ni Daniel. Di po ba? When we are asked to praise a different God, to respect a different God, it's going to be a very different matter. Uh, pero po yung hinihiling lang po sa atin ngayon, yung kaayusan lang po sa ating lipunan. Hindi po nais ng ating Panginoon na tayo ay lumabag sa batas. And we can never use Him. We should never use Him as an excuse. Otherwise, He will be mocked. And we never want our God to be mocked. Ang standard... Ano ang standard? Can you post it, please? Yeah, submit to authority. Number three, setting our eyes on representative Christians. Pag sinabi mo natin mga representative Christians, ito po madalas yung mga popular Christian groups, popular Christian personalities, that we have a lot of these days. Iba po meron tayong TVN, we have channels devoted to uh, Christian groups. Uh, kami hindi na namin alam, dahil wala na kaming TV sa bahay. Um, ang nangyayari po kasi madalas, there are some Christians who use these representative Christians as the basis for their own convictions. This is so prevalent, lalo na po sa usapang kayamanan, usapang pananamit, usapang lifestyle, ganyan po. But what has this inclination of following representative Christians done? It has created a lot of questions and confusion among the Bible, um, about the Bible's teachings of modesty, humility, meekness, obedience, and sacrifice. Pamisan nga po merong mga tagalabas na, hindi po mga kristyano ha, tagalabas, nagtatanong, is this still about Jesus or is this all just fanfare because it sometimes looks like it's a party or a really big concert, a big budget concert. And so many professing Christians choose the music or the delivery style over the actual message of the Bible because it meets their preference. This is expected. Sabi nga po sa 2 Timothy 4, 3 to 4. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accum accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their passions. Iyon po yun eh, to suit their passions, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. God revealed this before our, um, Christianity became such a big movement across the world because He knew what man would most likely spiral into. It would always be, how would this serve me? Instead of, what does God want? Or, what does this person say about God? Instead of, what is God actually saying in His Word? Ang standard po ng ating Diyos, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6 says it all. And supporting that is Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. There are good people who accomplish things in the name of the Lord. But at the end of the day, we need to take a cue from Apostle Paul and be imitators of Christ. There's no other whom we should imitate. Ang ating Panginoong Jesus lamang po. Bear in mind that we as humans, we are still prone to err. No matter how good we look to the rest of the world. But Jesus, He never sinned. Well, you know what? How easy would it have been for Jesus to just might all those who refused Him, who didn't want to, to obey Him. But He was merciful to the end, not sinning, despite the agony that He was subjected to. Alam mo yung gusto kong i-share itong maliit na bagay na to. I found this uh, uh, on one of uh, the social media platforms that I frequent. There's this trauma doctor, trauma surgeon actually. And he described the pain that Jesus experienced uh, while he was nailed to the cross. Sabi po yung, ano, yung nails, alam po natin, di ba pinako ang ating Panginoong Isus. Yung nails, it hit the portion of the median nerve on the wrist. It either destroyed or impinged that nerve, yung median nerve po. Thus, it hurt tremendously every time Jesus breathed. So whenever he took a, took a breath in, it hurt. When he exhaled, it hurt. There was no break to the physical suffering of Jesus. At that moment, it was from one excruciating pain to another, traveling throughout his body. He went through all of that so that we wouldn't have to and all he asks of us is to abide in him. Alam niyo po ako, meron akong cubital tunnel syndrome. I also have carpal tunnel syndrome. I have all the tunnel syndromes. Um, somebody asked me before, ano ba pakiramdam yung carpal tunnel na yan, yung cubital tunnel syndrome na yan? Mommy, mommy, my mom wanted to know. Sabi ko, uh, kapag umaatake siya, it's like pain niya na nagta-travel. Alam niyo yun, yung pag pinitik yung inyong funny bone, di ba parang nakukuryente kayo? Ganun po yung pakiramdam. So, halimbawa sa una, nagugulat ka lang. But if it keeps on happening, it hurts. My mama seen me in, uh, in great pain because of that. Talagang kandasigaw po ako sa sakit. Imagine the Lord experiencing that. And He was hanging. Nothing was supporting Him. So, yung trauma surgeon po, when He was explaining that, Alam niyo, he couldn't stop from, fear, uh, from tears falling down his eyes. Kasi nga, ganun po talaga yung kahirap ng pinagdaanan ng Panginoon. Kaya ba natin yun? Pero ang ating Panginoon, ang ating study, di ba sabi po ng ating Panginoon Jesus, there is no greater love than laying down your life for a friend. Sometimes nga, even your family cannot lay down your life, uh, cannot, cannot lay their, their life down for you. But that is what is expected of us when we follow Jesus. But if we really hold on tightly to the Lord, we will be able to live to that standard. Hindi po ba? Alam niyo po, nakita ko po sa akin niyo, of course, this is not something great. Alam niyo po. Um, nung nagkasakit po yung mommy ko, alam niyo po, nanginginig yung boses ko kasi pinagpapawisan ako ng bongga. Nandali lang po ha. Uh, when my mom was sick, I thought that I wouldn't be able to take care of her because I'm very, I know, I'm very squeamish. Alam niyo po, uh, I have uh, three, I have a niece and two nephews. I couldn't change their nappies. Ganun po ako squeamish. And then when my mom got sick, hindi ko naman po itinataas yung sarili ko. Kaya nga lang po, inaalala ko na lang yung pagmamahal sa amin talaga ng Panginoon noon. Tsaka yung pagmamahal na rin po ng nanay ko sa akin. When I was sick, Kasi sa akin, di po kami pamilya. I was ill for three years. Couldn't walk. I was in a wheelchair. I, I wore diapers. Um, I was from the age of 27 until the age of 30. That was my life. Uh, I was reminded of that. But if you are reminded of what Jesus did, why wouldn't you make him 
the standard for your life. Sabi po sa First John 2, it says, ay, hindi, babalik po muna ako sa mom ko. I didn't make my point pala doon. Yun nga, yung my mom needed taking care of. Sabi ko, hindi ko kaya tong bagay na to. Kasi nga, maarte ko, squeamish po ako. Pero alam niyo po, nakayahan lang po. Dahil na rin po yung pagmamahal ng Panginoon, pagmamahal ng nanay ko sa akin. Hindi po ako mamamahal ng nanay ko, kundi nang ganon, kundi po niya alam yung pagmamahal sa kanya ng Panginoon. Balik na po tayo, bago po ako maiyak. <laughs> First John 2.6 says, Sabi po ng Panginoon, Whoever says he abides in me ought to walk in the same way in which he walks. So let's walk in the way that Jesus walked. It's nice to find Christians who are truly following Jesus because they can make our walk of faith less lonely. Na-discuss ko na po ito before. But don't let them be the role models for your life, for your Christian life. If we do that, we'll get disappointed. Sometimes nga po, uh, if, when they sin, we get very discouraged, di po ba? Kasi we think they're, they're the standard. Huwag po natin isipin na ganun. Ang Panginoon lamang po ang ating standard. Um, we're all still humans, and we are still prone to make mistakes, and we are all still trying to get things right. We are not judging each other, no? I'm just saying that Jesus is the only standard. Jesus lived a humble life. He didn't promote being rich. He didn't utilize popularity platforms. He didn't pursue high positions on earth. But instead, he magnificently uh, fulfilled the purpose of God for him. So when it comes to Christian living, let us go back to the root word of the word Christian. Ano po yun? Christ. And this is the last one. This is going to be a very quick message. Letting your heart of hearts lead you to the right path. This has been discussed also many times before in the pulpit. Maski po doon sa aming BU. Nung bagong-bago pa po yung BU. Sabi dito, usong-uso po ito ngayon, yung mga kasabihan na follow your heart. Ito po nga advice, madalas. Uh, it easily goes around Christian groups rin, ano? And this is even complemented by the also questionable claim of God knows my heart. Indeed, God knows our hearts. He knows everything. He is, he is omniscient. That's why it is written in the Bible. Let's start with Genesis 6, 5, ah. Kung paano po alam ng ating Panginoon, ng ating mga puso. Genesis 6, 5 says, The Lord saw the wickedness of man was great on earth, and that every intention and the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Sundan po natin at Jeremiah 17, 9 to 10. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. Sa verse na ito, pinapakita po na ang ating mga gawa. Ito po ay bunga ng ating puso, kung ano po ang nasa ating mga puso. Ituloy po natin sa Mark 17, 21 to 23. For from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness, all these evil things come from within and they defile a person. What does this say? The heart cannot be trusted. Here's the truth, Christians. If your behavior is hurting the ministry or your brothers and sisters in Christ, and then people question your intentions, saying that the Lord knows your heart, it doesn't salvage the situation. Yes, God knows our hearts. He knows your heart. He knows mine. But what you should be asking all the time is if you are in tune with the heart of God. Iyon po ang importante. And ano nga po bang standard ng ating Panginoong Jesus? Be justified by what He did, by what Jesus did, not by your heart. Our hearts have the propensity to serve us. We are very self-centered. We are selfish people. Iyon po ang nature natin. That's why we need Jesus to transform us. Actually, ito po, very evident po to sa pananalita ng karamihan. Whenever we have the strong urge to justify our actions according to the intentions of uh, our hearts, instead, 
Turn to Jesus and search his word for the truth about your situation and learn what he would have done, what Jesus would have done, W-J-W-D. Pray about it. Diba sabi nga po ni Pastor Felix, kape? Ano nga po yung kape? Kausapin ang Panginoon every day. If we do that, God will provide us with the accurate answers to all of our questions. Makipag-usap po tayo sa Panginoon. Then proceed with humbling yourself before Him and acknowledging that all the good that you're capable of only has value because of what Jesus accomplished on the cross of Calvary. Christians, don't ever tire of asking Jesus to cleanse your heart so you can be good. You cannot do that by yourself. That's why God sent, sent Him, sent Jesus Christ as the lamb for the slaughter in our stead. Tapos na po ang ating message. Andito na po ako sa conclusion. Balik po tayo doon sa tanong ko kanina, no? Was the rich young man really not worthy of heaven? He wasn't. And every person who claims that he is good is also not worthy of heaven. By ourselves and by our own standards, we cannot enter the kingdom of God. That's why God sent His only begotten Son, Jesus, who was not just a teacher, but likewise the absolute standard of good. If anybody tells you otherwise, and there are some preachers who will tell you otherwise that Jesus is not enough. Oh my gosh, the audacity. I saw it on YouTube. I saw it on Instagram. There are pastors with big congregations who claim that what Jesus did on the cross and who Jesus is, his entirety, is not enough. And we can do other good things. Kalapas tanganan po iyon. You know, I can name three preachers off the top of my head who have made that claim that Jesus is not enough. No, Jesus is enough. Jesus is everything. Amen po ba? Jesus is everything. He is the only standard of good. Therefore, in every day of our lives, here on earth, our desire and course of action should be to follow Him. And only then can we be good. Manalangin po tayo. Close your eyes. Bow your hands. Panginoong Jesus, marami salamat po sa iyong salita. Yung salita that uh, aims to straighten our past, Lord God, so that we can be good before you. More than that, we are grateful, Lord God, sa pagpapadala mo po ng iyong anak na si Cristo Jesus to set the standards for us to follow. We continue to ask for your power to transform us, to work in us in such a way that we can overcome our weaknesses and our shortcomings. And finally, confidently say, that indeed, in Jesus, we live, move, and have our being. Maraming salamat, O Diyos, sa iyong kabutihan, sa iyong perfect ways, Panginoon, and for your mercies that never end. To the all glory, honor, and praise, Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus. Amen.